Legalize nuclear bombs. Now that right there, that was natural selection. Hello everybody, today we are going to be looking at a scenario where the United States and Russia go to war with Iran in 2024. Now a quick disclaimer here guys, I need y'all to join the Discord down the link below in the comments, and also I need you to like and subscribe because I said so. Listen guys, I know you haven't watched the video yet, but you need to, because I asked politely. Also guys, another, another disclaimer, this scenario is very, very unrealistic. I'm going to try to make up a story for it, but just know that this scenario is completely unrealistic and is not going to happen. Also, not everything can be 100% accurate, but yeah, but anyways, let's get to the storytelling now. I made up something here. So for the USA and Russia to ever team up with each other, we have to go all the way back to 1991, when Russia first became a country, after the collapse of the Soviet Union. We're going to have to make the assumption that both Russia and the USA try their very hardest to make good relations. And let's say it works. The United States and Russia get along very well, no invasion of Georgia happens, the annexation of Crimea doesn't happen, and of course the Russian invasion of Ukraine doesn't happen. And we can even see Russia considering joining NATO. We'll say that. The United States and Russia have some pretty decent relations, which actually helps Russia's economy and of course military in the long run. We'll say that Iran starts developing nuclear weapons. And of course, the United Nations is going to have their own council meeting. And the USA and Russia have their own private meeting. Basically, the USA comes to Russia asking, basically, hey, should we invade Iran and stop them from getting nukes? Because that could start World War III. Israel also has nukes. China also has nukes as well as India and Pakistan. And of course, the UK and France. So Iran getting nukes could definitely threaten World War III even more. Russia in this meeting is of course going to say yes. We have to invade Iran and stop them. So we can see this huge coalition popping up of the United States and Russia. That's pretty terrifying. But anyways, now that y'all get the background story, we can finally get to the facts. Let's get to the statistics. Alright, looking at Russia and the USA here, both countries combined have a total GDP of $28.8 trillion and a total land area of 10.3 million square miles. Their total population is 486 million and their total personnel is a whopping 5.7 million. They have a total number of tanks of 19,434 and they're literally first in every single military rank, Navy, Air Force, military rank in general, they're first in everything. So, looking at Iran here, Iran has a total GDP of $386 billion in a total land area of 636,400 square miles. Their total population is 89.8 million, and their total personnel is 1.1 million, which is actually pretty impressive. And they have a total number of tanks of 1,996, and their military rank is 14th, which is also pretty impressive. But anyways, looking back at the map here. So the USA and Russia definitely have all the advantages, of course, on paper. But Iran, of course, has geography on their side, the home advantage. But anyways, this has probably been the first two minutes of the video. I know. I'm making these intros long now, apparently. But yeah, let's finally get into the war now. So, what is the first thing that is going to happen here? Well, the first thing that's going to happen is probably US military bases bombing Iran. The USA probably bombs any nuclear facility they can find. And Russia would probably also do the same. But since the USA has their own military already here, of course military bases, the USA is going to take the initiative and bomb Iran. So now it's Russia's turn to do something. And what are they going to do? Well, they're going to use their Caspian Sea Navy, which they've taken some time to build up, and they push it down towards Iran's Navy. Now, is Iran's Navy going to stand a chance here? I would say absolutely not. A US supplied and supported Russia would probably absolutely obliterate Iran just by themselves. So we can see the first naval battle of the war happening, and it turning out as a Russian victory, as they take some of Iran's waters. What the freak, USA? So the USA is going to do something of about like this. Of course, I have to draw their navy in somewhere, they gotta get there. And would it look like this? Probably not, but I have to make it look like something. So, we can see the US Navy pulling up to Iran, and the two navies meeting up. Now, Iran here is going to do some unforeseen tactics, and actually beat back the US Navy, making them retreat back to their own waters, or I guess these waters down here. But this advantage does not last too long, as the US Air Force is of course helping out the US Navy, and the US Navy once again gains the advantage. We can see them taking over the coastal waters around Iran's coast, of course, and docking in the UAE. I'm pretty sure the UAE and the USA are allies, I'm pretty sure of that. I don't think they like Iran either. So the UAE would probably allow this, maybe Oman too, but I'm not too sure on Oman. But anyways, the Iranian Navy is getting pushed back. Now you guys might be thinking, didn't you just say Iran was getting nukes? And yes I did. But that does not mean the nukes are going to be capable of shooting like Moscow, or of course DC, because these nukes are of course new, they are test nukes, so they're not going to be getting anywhere. 
especially with the USA and Russia bombing research facilities and also nuclear facilities, so it's probably not going to happen anytime soon. But anyways, the Russian Navy has fully collapsed the Iranian Navy, at least in the north, and they've gained full naval supremacy over this coast right here and also these waters. And are they going to make a landing right here? Probably not right now, because it's not a very good um idea. Of course, there's a huge mountain range right here, and also Iran's military can just focus up here. So if Russia tried to land, they, they'd probably get a lot of casualties, and they do not want that. So they are going to hold off on any landings. Eventually, after a lot of brutal fighting, we can see the US gaining the advantage in the Persian Gulf, and destroying much of Iran's navy, to a point where it eventually fully collapses. Now would it collapse that fast? Maybe. Iran's navy might be on something, I'm not too sure. But we are talking about the full US navy, and also Air Force helping them, so... But anyways, what is the plan now? Of course, they've already bombed and destroyed the nuclear facilities. Is it really necessary to make a landing? Yes. You see, Russia and the United States have come to an agreement that Iran's government kind of sucks, and they need a new one. So now they have to make a landing somewhere. Of course, we already discussed that landing up here was a terrible idea. Landing anywhere on this coast is also probably a bad idea, but landing right here might be a good idea. If you guys didn't know, this area is actually very rich in oil, it also has one of Iran's biggest cities, and it's also a flat area. If you guys didn't know, the mountains are about like that. Something like that. And this is a flat area. This is probably the point where the US would land, and it is going to be. As the US makes a small landing on the coast. Something like that. Now you guys also might be wondering, is the US and Russia's oil trade or oil at all affected? I would say no. Russia has some of the largest oil reserves in the world, and the USA can already help itself, because they can of course drill more, and Russia can do the same, so they will not be running out of oil anytime soon. So anyways, looking back at the front lines, we can see the US advance continuing, as they push down the Iranian coast, and take many, of course, oil-rich areas. They eventually take this big Iranian city right here, and hug the mountains, and create a front line that looks about like this. Alright, so they just took the spot they wanted to, now what do they do? If they manage to capture Iran's capital, it could probably cripple them a little bit. But for now, they're kind of stuck. So they're going to have to think of something new. Revolution. So we can see Russia and the USA funding a huge rebellion in Iran. Actually, two rebellions. Oh, that's not good for Iran. Now their military actually has to do something. So now Iran has three different front lines to fight on. Not too good. But these are rebellion groups, so... We can see Iran actually managing to push back these rebellion groups, of course. The Iranian military is of course a military, these rebellion groups are not, so they are going to get pushed back a lot. And with the US Navy being right there, they are able to supply the Yellow Team group, and even make landings there. And eventually this entire rebellion group is practically held up by the US, so we'll do that. We'll say that the Iranians in this area welcome the US troops. There's probably someone from Iran watching this and just laughing, but guys, I'm trying my best. Looking at the green team here. <coughs> no, stop, no. We can see Iran also pushing them back, both the Russian Navy themselves being there. We can see the Russians, of course, landing there and supplying this rebellion group, which once again is practically held up by Russian forces. So we'll do that. These are rebellion groups basically controlled by Russia and the US. They're held up by them. Now that the US and Russia have a front line in Iran, it's going to be a lot easier to push in. But these areas right here, they're kind of just desert and mountains, nothing too good. The good stuff is right here, right here. That's where the good stuff is. So the US is going to set up a stalemate on this border and focus more on these two, as well as Russia is going to do that. So we can see US front lines expanding down here in the south, as well as Russia pushing towards Iran's capital. Eventually, we can see more and more landings being made on Iran's coast, but the Iranian military is doing a pretty good job pushing them back, as they push most of them back. But the US is very persistent, so they are not going to stop, as they make another landing, and the Iranians fail to push it out all the way. We can see more and more Russian troops flooding over to the Iranian capital, and also some of Iran's military defecting, and eventually, Russia meets the gates of the city. And with by far the bloodiest battle of the war, we can see it turning out as a Russian victory, which cripples Iran pretty, I'd say majorly. With the capturing of Iran's capital, we can see more and more of their military defecting, and the US also capturing more and more of their coastline. The Russians push deeper into the mountains, but this isn't going to go as far as they might want it to, because Iran's military does know the mountains and Russia does not. Maybe they use Google Maps or something, but Russia almost completes this encirclement right here, but the Iranians manage to hold it off. Ooh, Iran, they're not doing too good. They ain't looking too hot. Looks like Russia and the USA are doing a pretty big toll on them. That makes sense. But anyways, after a few more weeks of fighting, we can see this encirclement being completed, and around 100,000 Iranian soldiers being encircled. Some of them defect, and some of them are just captured, and some of them die. We can see US and Russian forces pushing up to try to meet each other, 
This push goes successfully, and Russia and the USA make a deeper push into Iran. Eventually, the US captures most major areas on the coast, to make something that looks about like this. And after the capturing of this area right here, we can see the full collapse of the Iranian government. Or it could have been overthrown, either one of those. Alright, so looking at the peace treaty here, ooh, nothing really big happened to Iran, other than them losing their freaking north to Azerbaijan. No, this really isn't that big of a deal. Well, they did lose a lot of population, but it's fine. Azerbaijan also gained a lot of stuff, and Armenia is sweating right now. This is not good. But anyways, remember that yellow team group down here in the south? Well, they were a democratic group, and they just took over Iran. And they're pretty pro-democratic and also pro-Russian in the USA. And of course, they are going to ban making nuclear weapons and destroy any facility that was left. And the world is apparently saved. And yeah, that's gonna do it for this scenario, guys. Russia and the USA won. Of course they did. Why wouldn't they win? But anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe. Also join the Discord down in the link below in the comments. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Can you see all of me?